owls don't normally um, live in trees. Yes, they do. I was I was going to say have houses. He doesn't have a house. He has a tree. Henrietta Pussycat has a house. Owned by X the Owl, who is renting to... It's not. He doesn't live in it. He lives in the tree. But he has a house. Owls can be landlords. All right. Don't be bigoted. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I've always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. It's another beautiful day in Mr. Rogers' neighborhood. It sure is, Stephen. And we're back with another episode of Please Won't You Be My Podcast. Won't you? Okay. Good. It's episode 1179. It's uh, volume one, episode nine? nine on the Amazon collection. Yes. That math checks out. I just did it in my head. It's, it's pretty all easy. good. Pretty simple math. It's Thursday of our second week of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. This week is about jealousy, according to Amazon. And cake again. Yeah, this is Jealousy Week. Yeah, uh, our first week of Mr. Rogers had some cake baking, and this week uh, they've sort of heard our complaints about Chef Brockett's cake decorating abilities. And and I think they've sort of made up for it in a couple different directions, which we'll get into. Uh-huh. Um, so in this episode, uh, right off the bat, Mr. Rogers gets a call from Chef Brockett. Yeah, well, he doesn't get the call for a while. He's expecting the call right off the bat. Oh. Um, he, he says he met Chef Rocket on the way over to mm. his house, from his real house, presumably. Right. Yeah. Um, he does a pretty bad Chef Rocket impersonation, which is to say he doesn't. He just talks in his normal voice. Instead I don't think of, that's an impression in that case. Chef, well, but he quotes him, and I feel like he does a bit of a... I feel like he could have put more effort in, I guess is what I'm saying. How would you, how would you do the impression? Like, what if you were saying that you ran into Chef Brocket? Oh, I ran into Chef Brocket on my way over here. He was like, oh, Mr. Rogers, you should come over. And uh, I mean, I haven't, I don't know Chef Brocket that well, so I guess I'm not as... So anyways, he gets a call from Brocket, and then he heads over there? Uh, well, first he looks at... He looks at sort of his his icing equipment, which he has for decorating. Oh cakes. yeah, he's got like this weird like metal tube one, which I've Mr. never Rogers seen. Mr. Rogers does. Yeah, in my life, um, instead of just sort of a pastry bag with a nozzle on the end, he's yeah, I mean, got like a, a like, like a, a syringe, a big metal icing syringe, like a uh, one of those old timey cartoon bug. Yeah, pesticides. It's it's guns. very it's very vintage. And speaking of very vintage, after he shows us that, he goes over and calls up some pictures of cakes on picture picture. Oh yeah, and he uh, he there's a picture picture. Cake. Yeah, and then there's a there's a, uh, a Valentine's, Valentine's Day cake. cake. It's yeah. a heart with some flowers on it. Then there's a cake which is an anniversary. It clearly says Happy seventieth anniversary on. Well, no, I it, didn't see the seventieth. It very. It's hard to read, but it says uh, Happy seventieth anniversary on it. And Mister Rogers can't read it. He he can't make it out. Or he's like, well, I, I've never seen a cake like that before. What do you think it's for? And we're all like, uh, anniversary. Like seventieth <laughs> anniversary on it, Mister Rogers. Um, and then there's a... Is the Halloween cake next? Yeah, I think so. There's a Halloween cake. Uh, he uses the phrase false faces I for also, what you wear on yeah. Halloween. I also made a note of that. Which Who is, says the word false faces? Mr. Rogers does, Stephen. Uh, he's Mr. Not Rogers it. says false faces. And then there's a, a graduation cake, which similar to the anniversary cake. He, he, he eventually says it's a graduation cake. He does kind of but takes he really, a while. He really takes a long you, walk up to it. It was, uh, it was a tense moment when you're like, is this going to be two cakes that Mr. Rogers can't identify? Yeah, for a second I thought he was doing this thing. It was like, well, look, we're not going to talk about any cakes that these children haven't experienced directly. Oh, I, you don't yeah. want to spoil their life experience. I mean, for them. Valentine's Day, birthdays, Halloween, these are all very either kid-friendly or, like, fairly universal events. But graduation I mean, wedding. Valentine's Day is on the fringe, but kids still get into Valentine's Day whether they want to or not. But then anniversaries, especially 70th anniversaries and graduation, are not really on 
the kid's radar. Right. Uh-huh. And certainly not what I would think of as a cake. Well, I wouldn't, I've never seen a Halloween cake before in my life either. Yeah. But maybe I'm not going to the right fall space parties. I think pumpkin pie is more the thing. Or just like candy. <laughs> sure. Actually, now that I think about it, I was going to say something else, but I realized candy was the answer to what you eat on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Wet apples. Yeah. Yeah. Or candied apples. Yeah. All good things. Yeah. Um, he sings a song about practicing. He sung this song before, I believe. I don't remember it from before. I noticed this time there's a nice line in it, which is, uh, you never learn to feel by wearing gloves. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was good. Which is, it's, it's quite the imagery. Where were so we come over to Chef Brockett's uh, bakery in There's... search of Mr. Smith, the cake decorator. Oh, you got his name. Okay, uh, because Chef Brockett learned from uh, his last appearance on our. Yeah, show. I'm glad he's decided to outsource his cake decorating because he's very bad at it. Yeah, well, he's got like a big bakery now with his name on it, so he can't. Yeah, be... he's got he's got two sets in his bakery. Two sets? Yeah, he's got the front of the bakery, oh, yeah. where, um, I forget the name of the woman, there's a sale on um, Kala. Mrs. Shang, it sounded like? Yeah. She was Spanish? Yeah, she's Hispanic, something in there. The big sale on ceremonial Jewish bread. Was there? Yeah, that's what Kala is. So he, he makes some small talk with the lady at the counter and a couple of the people shopping in the bakery. But ultimately, he makes his way back to... Makes his way back to the kitchen. To Mr. Smith. Yeah, uh, you. I saw in your notes, and I have it too. Chef Rocket's kitchen says "quiet" on the wall in big <laughs> rainbow letters. And I think uh, the um, Mr. Smith, the professional cake decorator, mm-hmm. um, he didn't really seem happy to be there to me. He certainly was not media trained. I would say he wasn't like he wasn't a, a TV actor, certainly, but also like he seemed annoyed. He he said the line. Um, yeah. Mister Rogers said, "How how long does it take to decorate a cake like this?" And he said, "Well, it depends if you keep interrupting it too much." Yeah. And I was like, "Boy, yeah, this Mr. guy really doesn't want to be." Mister Rogers suggests maybe a couple of hours. Maybe this guy got to Chef Rocket's kitchen though, and he saw the big quiet, and he's like, "Finally, <laughs> a place that yeah. understands my craft." And then Mister Rogers comes in. Yeah, Chef Rocket's actually really loosened up on the quiet. He, he's got the sign "Quiet in the Kitchen," but really, but they were talking through the. They whole were thing. talking about stuff, which is they weren't loud, but compared to his season one appearance, that's it was raucous and ribald. So they, they decorate a wedding cake. <laughs> Now, uh... And then they decorate... Do you have anything about the first cake? Yeah, the first cake, um... I seem to recall that at the beginning, uh, when Chef Rocket calls Mr. Rogers over, Mm -hmm. he says, yeah, the cake decorator just got here. You can come over. But then when he gets there, the cake is, like, already fully decorated. That's true. And he says that it it took hours to do. Yeah. So I don't know if he, like, came back. Or brought the cake with him. I don't know. Yeah, that's true. That's some continuity issue. Continuity there is error. more cake continuity. And so they finish off the wedding cake. Yeah, Mr. Rogers uh, really enjoys the 27. Like, uh, Yeah, he's excited by the idea that there's such a big it's like if, uh, icing hose tube. It's like uh, on Tool Time when Tim Taylor mm. has a guest on the show and he's like, oh yeah, I really want to see you use that big heavy power tool. And Mr. Rogers is like, Oh, please, Mr. Please, Mr. Smith, won't you use the number 27 star ribbon icing? (laughs) Icing nozzle. Yeah. More Uh, icing. So he convinces Mr. Smith to use the 27 and he adds these big poofy icing things. This is to the the second cake, which is a color I described as egg salad sandwich yellow. (laughs) Yeah, it wasn't a very pretty cake. It's not. I mean, certainly a step up from what Chef Brockett can accomplish. Yeah. With his it's abilities. certainly a 70s cake. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe the fact it's the 70s, maybe it is egg salad sandwich icing. Egg salad sandwich flavored. Flavored icing, yes. Uh, so then they put a topper on this yellow cake. Yeah, Mr. Smith has and this topper. You know it, it's an Eiffel Tower. But it's not just an Eiffel Tower. It's the Eiffel Tower from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, which it's, it's in because Mr. Smith says it reminds him of his teacher that he had. Who who was French? Um, I don't know why it would, because it doesn't really look like the real Eiffel Tower. No, which it looks like Mr. Rogers' imaginary Eiffel Tower. So Mr. Smith got—I don't know where he got this decoration. I have a suspicion he might have got it off of Mr. Rogers' shelf. 
where he keeps his toys. Those locks just didn't work out. No, they didn't work out. Mr. McFeely still has a key. Um, maybe maybe Mr. Smith ordered an Eiffel Tower and Mr. McFeely was like, well, this has got to be fast. Paris is a long way away. I know the quickest place. I know the speediest place I can get an Eiffel Tower from. And so he speedily ran over to Mr. Rogers' house, broke in, yeah. uh, stole the model of the make-believe Eiffel Tower, which is yeah. blue and red with pie plates all around it. Yeah. Uh, and then ran it over to uh, Mr. professional Smith. cake decorator Mr. Smith. Yeah. Uh, and Mr. Smith looked at it and said, yes, this is what I remember the Eiffel Tower yeah, looking like. it reminds like. me of a friend. I mean, he never said he's been to France. Maybe he only had it described to him by his French uh, instructor. This so, is before the internet. You couldn't just look up a picture of the Eiffel Tower online. No. You had to rely on word of mouth descriptions and black and white photos. Yeah, and then you try to draw a rhinoceros and it comes out looking immaculate. Exactly. Um, so Mr. Rogers suggests, let's imagine... Uh, Grandpere and Colette are in the land of make-believe at the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. And then all three of them, Mr. Rogers, Mr. Smith, and Chef Brockett, all sort of like lean in together and look at the camera as we transition. As we iris out to the land of make-believe. So let's do that now. Let's iris out. Slide whistle. Sure. So we're on our way to the land of make-believe. You got any more transition noises? I wasn't really sold on that bit, but now we've gone too far. And I mean, we don't have to. If you're the one who does the final edit. I mean, I don't know if there's much else left to work with. Here we are in the land of make-believe. Here we are in the land of make-believe. Where are, we're at the Eiffel Tower, first of yeah, all, we, yeah? we start off at the Eiffel Tower. Colette and Grandpere are talking about... Uh, Something The, tro the trolley comes by, actually, which is interesting, because we didn't take the trolley. Hmm. So Chef Brockett shows up immediately with a uh, with a cake with a, the same cake. With but the, he says we just I just made this with my friends. That's true. Um, but Mr. Rogers uh, proved this not to be true because before we went into the land of make believe, he sabotaged the whole continuity by requesting the number twenty seven star ribbon uh, icing thing. Yeah, uh, a which big wasn't extra band of script, white icing which, around the cake. Uh, when Chef Rocket brings it to Colette and Grandpere, is not the number twenty-seven was not used on this no. cake. No. Um, yeah, so he brings the cake. It's got the Eiffel Tower on it, and he presents it. He will first he makes them guess what it is. Oh yeah, he holds it behind his back and he plays guess the pastry. Which is, I mean, it's a delicate thing to be holding like that. Well, <laughs> he doesn't really care what happens to this. No, cake. clearly not. So they play guess what I brought you, and um, it takes way too long, and eventually they guess cake or yeah, gato, gato. Oh, gato, which is cat in Spanish and cake in French. I think it's spelt differently. Mm. I don't know how it's spelt in Spanish, but uh, anyway, French it's spelt all French. Chef Brockett is eager to get out of the scene, and so he sets the uh, cake down in the most precarious position. Yeah, he sort of puts it on the corner of the Eiffel Tower. He puts it like resting half on the pie plates, so it's but like it's, teetering. It's very unstable, clearly from the jump. Um, Grandpere is worried about it, but Chef Rocket says, "No, nah, as long as just don't bump it, it'll be fine." <laughs> yeah, which <laughs> that's true of anything that's precarious. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the confusing thing: is um, seeing the Eiffel Tower on top of the cake. Um, Colette uh, says that the cake reminds her of home, which it really shouldn't. It really no, because it doesn't look like the Eiffel Tower from France, where she is from. It looks like the Eiffel Tower she is currently staying in. <laughs> yeah, if this reminds me of. The place I'm visiting now. Yeah. This reminds me of my grandfather's home, this where I am at present. This reminds me not of my Eiffel Tower, but yours. Yeah. So they decide they're just going to leave the cake there on the corner. Although Grandpere says, it worries me to leave it there. Yeah. I, I have in my notes a cake disaster in the making. It, um, so, But they head down inside the Eiffel Tower to set the table. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they don't take the cake with them. Imagine holding that cake. That would be like holding it with your thumb and pinky. Well, true. And carrying the true enough. They have and very I, tiny. I, I don't think it would fit down there. With almost exactly the dexterity of your yeah. thumb and pinky. But then again, we'll get to this. So then we cut across town to the platypus mound, 
where Robert Troll is smelling the plasma yeah, smell. Yeah, he's sort of wandering around and pretending to greet people, but not. Because there's nobody there. Yeah, like he, he mimes to ring uh, Lady Lane Fairchild's bell. But doesn't. Just to enjoy his hilarious ringing the bell bit. Yeah, he's reliving that hilarious... That hilarious bit. Uh, then he heads over to the treehouse. He knocks on X the Owl's door a couple times. X the Owl says, I'm sorry, Rubber Troll. I'm having a shower. I can't be with you right now. I suggest you go over to the castle because Henrietta Pussycat is watching the waterfall. Um, but Henrietta is not exactly looking at the waterfall. Rubber Troll gets over there and it seems like what she's actually doing is trying to cast a spell. Cast a spell on the cake across across the way. Uh, to, to make, make it, it fall. fall. That waterfall's still there. I don't know why. It's no good. No, it must have been like the thing last week, and they're like, I don't have a bit of continuity. The plumber can't come until next week to yeah, take it down. Or something, because it's not a good. Yeah, so she's trying to cast a spell to make the cake fall over. She says, Meow, wish, meow, would fall. Meow, wish, meow, would fall. Yeah. Meow, wish, meow, would fall. There was a bit here, because of the way she removes all the important words from sentences, that I thought maybe she was worried she would fall. Oh. Which is dark. <laughs> um, I mean, this is dark anyway. I feel like she has taken a step up from, like... Being paranoid that she's being replaced to being... Outwardly malicious. Yeah. Yeah. Hoping disaster upon... She's, she's dealt straight into the black magic. Um, Robert Troll's also confused, because he says, no, the water's already falling. That's a fun bit. Uh, and so he, he figures out that she's trying to make the cake fall. And then he says, oh, you're you're wishing that the cake would fall. And then he, like, puts his fingers to his forehead and starts, like, going... And then there's, like, a whooshing wind sound. I missed that. It was... I backed up and watched it again because, like, it seems... It seems a lot like after finding out that Henrietta wanted to wish this cake would fall robert troll uses some kind of troll powers and there's no way that i would prove this in a court of law but it was I definitely mean, that, seemed that true because i my theory was oh henrietta has unlocked magical powers mm -hmm. um robert troll assures her that well you can't make something happen just by thinking about it well but this is the land of make-believe robert troll Clearly says you can robert troll says you can't make something happen just by thinking about it which i would say He's saying you can't do that. No, but I can. But I can. Because later he says, later he says, Henrietta, we're in trouble. That's also yeah, he does. He like tries to bring her into this. So the wind, the wind blows, the cake falls over, which I believe was Robert Troll's doing. So they go over to take a closer look at the damage. Yeah, the cake is all over the place. It it fell over real good. Uh, it sort of harkens um, back to the uh, portrait. Disaster. Yeah, this is... Lots this, of stuff falling off of the Eiffel Tower. I'm going to say they had some filler. And this, this is like how Star Wars was originally going to be one big movie. Uh -huh. And and in sort of the process of writing it, it was like, well, you got to cut it down, you got to cut it down. And so finally George Lucas was like, well, all right, we'll take the Death Star. We'll put it in the first part. We'll, well, that'll be the short movie. And then they're like, well, now we can do these other two movies. But then George Lucas gets to his climax of the third movie. He's like, well, I already used... The climax, let's build a second Death Star. Mm. So the cake is the second portrait, is what I'm saying You're here. saying the cake is the second Death Star. Yeah. And the picture is the first Death Star. Gotcha. Yeah. And to be fair, they did, they upped the stakes, because she doesn't just knock it over. Uh, she tricks Robert Troll into using his mental powers mm -hmm. to blow it over. Yeah. And apparently cause damage all over the neighborhood. Yeah, because uh, Lady Elaine pops out. Lady Elaine Fairchild pops up. And she says, oh, I'm here, I'm setting things right. A yeah. uh, big wind came and blew everything over, so I'm fixing it with my rumorang, tumorang, sumorang. I think boomerang's in there somewhere. Oh, I, I, yeah. As a child, I had a rumorang. Because that's <laughs> what it is. It's a boomerang. an indoor boomerang. Yeah, but she doesn't have a rumorang. She has a boomerang, which is an outdoor boomerang with yeah. magical powers to... I think primarily make things go backwards. Yeah, reverse film footage. Yeah, which she does here. Yeah, they can't reverse with their normal cameras. Yeah, it's... Uh, and they can't light well for their reversing cameras. Uh, Lady Elaine Fairchild uh, uses her magic spell to wind back time yeah. to fix the cake. It's a pretty alright effect, but it's badly shot. Yeah, for some reason, the rewound footage is like from a really bad camcorder. I think, like, I don't know what the 70s was at in terms of 
Maybe not all cameras could rewind. But anyways, the cake explodes back together and bounces up onto the ledge. Um, Henrietta and Robert Troll, despite having done this with malice aforethought, are mm-hmm. very glad because they regretted it immediately. Yeah. Lady Lane Fairchild has my favorite line. Think something of it? Yeah. <laughs> Instead of thinking. Yeah. That. Yeah, they're thanking her. She says, oh, think, think something of it. Uh, she says, let's go get some grub. And so they all go off to uh, the the museum go around, I guess, for grub. And so then we're back, not in Mr. Rogers' house, but in the bakery again. I mean, we have to travel back. To oh, the... sorry, yes. Well, let's just use the boomerang, tumerang, sumerang, sumerang to uh, reverse our trip to the land of make-believe. All right. All right. Oh no. Meow, Hello, meow. Henrietta Pussycat. Meow, meow, doing here, meow. I don't know, what are you doing here? No, meow, 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 doing here, meow. Oh, I'm. Oh. We tried to dabble in the boomerang arts, and Stephen disappeared, and now it's just you and me here. Meow, meow, meow. So, where did Stephen go? Where were you before just now? Meow, meow, make believe, meow. Okay. Steve, I don't think Steven's make-believe. Meow, meow. Meow, meow in make-believe. Oh, you were in the land of make-believe. Well, meow, that makes sense, because that's meow, the only left. places you let. How did you leave? Meow, meow. Follow meow. Oh, uh, well, it's weird that you wanted to leave, since you were earlier concerned that they would send you away. Meow, meow. Decided meow would meow some meow where meow only cat meow. Oh, you wanted to come somewhere where you were the only cat. Meow, meow, meow. Um, about that. First of all, did you try to use magical powers to knock over Colette's cake? Meow tell you. Meow. See, that's what I thought. So meow can stay here, meow? Well, here's the thing. There there are plans in the works. Meow plans? In fact, I don't know when this episode... Well, I do know when this episode's coming up. We probably don't have a cat at this exact moment as time of, of recording. But my sister wants to get a cat. And I don't think she wants to get a cat that wears too much makeup and a weird hat. Me- meow, 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 Henrietta, meow. Also, I mean, I don't know how to break this to you, but that show is from the 70s. You must be like... A thousand years old in cat years now. Meow, meow your face, meow. Well, you can you can meow right off. Meow, 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 crying, meow, meow. Boy, well there goes our there goes our clean tag. I'm sorry I had to hear that, audience. Whoa, what happened? I just cussed out Henrietta Pussycat. You what? Yeah, I don't know what came over me. She just she gets on my nerves, I guess. Oh boy, Andrew, I was yeah. just feeding the fish and. Come back here and you're verbally abusing characters from the well, show. Okay, but you need to understand she wanted to move in. I mean, I'm trying to she make... She wanted to move in with us. Um, a- Andrew, I'm trying to make this a good podcast mm-hmm. about Mr. Rogers. Right. And so if a character from Mr. Rogers yeah. comes on the show, right, that's a good opportunity to make this a good Mr. Rogers podcast. Um, I'm just bad at people, you know that. Right, but I just, I need you, like, I didn't need, I, I've been trying to book people from oh, this I show. Oh, I see, you should, I should have, I should, I didn't think about that, yeah, we, I didn't know this was a guest podcast, I didn't think it was our format. I, well, I, it, it is, it hasn't been, but, I mean, so we've made it safely back to the real world, though. We've made, yeah, we're in Chef Rocket's kitchen. Um, basically, Mr. Rogers leaves. He gets a gingerbread cake from Chef Rocket. Now, hold on. Practice. Oh, I'm sorry. Because we got a problem here. Uh-oh. Uh, Chef Rocket. Yep. Took the cake. Oh, yes. He took the cake. To the land of make-believe. Mm-hmm. Then when we finished make-believing, the cake was still there. Well, it's a different cake, though. You said yourself. Hmm? There's extra icing on this cake. Right. But I thought that that was transformed by make-believe-itude. Maybe it's not like a morphing change. It's like a duplication, different change. So if I take a cake to the land of make-believe and I bring it back, I can have my cake and eat it too. 
Yeah. I have a money-making scheme that involves cake and traveling to the you're land gonna, of make-believe. You're going to embezzle cakes to the land of make-believe. I'm going to have infinite cakes. I mean, yeah. You could probably... There's probably other ways to get a infinite m- multitude cakes? of cakes. With the land of make-believe, yes. Oh. You think I could just imagine infinite cakes? Yeah, probably. I don't know if I'm that powerful. Cakes might come from space. I mean, maybe you could sweet talk Lady Lane Fairchild into doing it. Question is, can you take a cake out of the land of make believe? Mm. I don't think we've ever seen anything come out of the land of make believe. Well, there was that time that Mister Rogers gave Lady Aberlin a burlap cape, Mm -hmm. which she took to the land of make believe, and then left there. And then Mister McFeely brought it back. You're right. You're, I think it's so. I mean, it started in the real world, went to the land of make believe, and then came back. But it came so back with a different person. So did the cake. So uh, before leaving the bakery, uh, Mister Rogers is given a special gift, or maybe a special loan from Chef Rocket. It's the number twenty-seven yeah. star-shaped ribbon. I don't know what the last word of this. I is. mean, it, well, and also nozzle. it's not a star-shaped nozzle. Number um, 27. And Chef Rocket doesn't even say that it's a number 27. He says it's it's almost the number 27, which Mr. Rogers quickly accelerates to, oh, yeah, just like you're number 27. Mm-hmm. So he's he's excited. He's I think completely, later... He's completely done with, with calligraphy now. He's all about cake decorating. Oh, yeah. And he he's definitely... He starts calling this thing the number 27. He's so and happy he's, he's going to use it. Thrilled. Um, so we go back home to Mr. Rogers' uh, house. He takes a stab at decorating the cake. And this is the second time where Chef Rocket is vindicated because, boy, no longer the title holder for worst cake on uh, this I, show. I don't know about that. I mean, the cake itself seems fine, but the decoration on it is just abysmal. Well, I mean, it lacks artistry. Um, it lacks artistry, but on the other hand, it lacks technique as well. Right, but I think you're forgetting how bad Chef Rocket's cake was. When he took the back of a measuring spoon and just like dragged it like a trowel through his icing. But I mean, at least he was spelling like 13. I don't think he was. No, he, he wrote 13 on the top of that cake. Mr. Rogers is just like, let's maybe make a frame. Mr. Rogers is nuts about frames. He loves frames. He, he loves make them frames. out of paper, make them out of icing. He's got picture picture, which is a frame. In a frame. That's framed. Yeah. He's uh, he's he's frame happy. He's a frame fanatic. It's a wonder he doesn't wear glasses he doesn't need. As he's making this cake, Mr. Rogers recapping the make-believe segment. Yeah. Uh, and he says, uh, wishing something can't make things come true. Which is patently false. Uh, because we saw... Because the land of make-believe exists. <laughs> yeah, that's true. How did the land of make-believe come into existence if not by a wish of Mr. Rogers? Yeah. Exactly. Like, in the land of make-believe, if anywhere, wishes will come true. Mm-hmm. I mean, we saw that they do. Yeah, well, that's true. That's Henrietta true. wished that the cake would fall, and then it just so happens that a troll with that very psychic ability yeah. comes along, makes it fall. And then, and then they Lady wish Elaine that they had done it, and then the magical fixer comes along. The magical fixer comes along and undoes it, just like they wish. Yeah, and Lady Elaine Fairchild just does whatever she wants all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She moved Grand Pair's whole house one time. Yep. Just for kicks. But now she's using her abilities... For good? For for setting things right. As an example of things that you wish not coming true, Mr. Rogers sings what I believe is the best song he's ever sung. It is it is not unlike a Shel Silverstein poem. It really stares unblinkingly into the weird darkness of childhood. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Mr. Rogers sings a song about something he wished as a child, which Mr. Rogers wished that a lion would come. A giant lion. A giant lion would uh, arrive and eat his house and street. Yeah. Uh, and then also stomp, the whole neighborhood. stomp on everything. Yeah, because he was mad at the whole world. A very angsty um, Master Rogers. Yeah, right. Young Rogers. <laughs> Young Master Rogers. Young Master Rogers. Uh, very angsty about his uh, parents um, being killed outside of Zorro. <laughs> outside, yeah. In Crime Alley. Yeah, uh, so he wishes that a lion would come was... and straighten out the... And so he became Lion yeah. Man. Yes, father, I shall become a lion. 
But instead, he he just built, bought a fake house and started talking to kids at it. Because wishes can't make things come true. No. Only a lot of money would make something come true. And Mr. Rogers... Mister, that was the day. Did not have he billionaire parents. wanted the lion to come and eat his neighborhood because he was so mad at the world. Uh-huh. That didn't happen, but he dedicated his life to making wishes come true. And over the course of his... However old he is at this point, over the course of those years, he summoned the land of make-believe into existence with just the power of his imagination. Mm-hmm. This, is, then, this song is the Mr. Rogers origin story. And then he went on to tell children that it's not possible. Well, I mean, you know, that's, that's a great power. I feel like being told by Mr. Rogers that it's not possible isn't going to dissuade you if you really have the the capacity that you need for this sort of thing. Oh, you think that this uh, is not a lie so much as a test? Yeah. So you heard it here first from us. Mr. Rogers has incredible powers. And if you need to, if you have to, you can make a lion eat your house and street. So that was episode 1179. We'll be back next week with 1180. Our theme song was provided by Dan Brisbane. Yep. And our trolley Little Twitter fan, our I mean friend. Sorry, Dad, <laughs> for just just big timing you like that. Uh, our trolley transition tune was made by Rindale. I don't know who he is. He doesn't know who we are. He doesn't know who we are. Thanks, uh, Creative Commons or whatever. Um, we have a Tumblr. We do have a Tumblr now, and it's, that's, it's great. It's uh, it's please won't you be my dot dot com. I gotta say, Stephen, I love this Tumblr. We've got reaction gifts of Mr. Rogers making funny faces. We've recast the cast of CSI Miami with Mr. Rogers characters. Yeah, that's... There's a lot of great stuff happening on Please Won't You Be My... And and you've done it up for all our previous episodes. Yes, every episode up until now now has a post on the Tumblr. And we'll try to keep putting those out. It'll be a few days after the podcast. Yeah, is so subscribe. Well, we'll be back when the week is new and we'll have more ideas for you. Yes, we will. I know you'll have things you'll want to talk about. And I'm going to sweat in this room because it's summer and poorly ventilated. I will too. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you please? Won't you please? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please, won't you be my podcast? Meow, meow, thank you, Lady Elaine. Meow, meow, meow. Yeah, we can sir. Thank you, Lady Elaine. That boomerang, boomerang, we got to sign a bottle bottle. I get that sign of it. <laughs> oh, think something of it, dear. Now, how about coming over to the museum, go around for some grub? Looks like we're all finished here. Okay, I'm going the back way. See you friends there. Okay, sit down, Lady Elaine. Come on, Henrietta. Yeah, no. <sighs>